Namibia is committed to the following objectives for COP26. One, we aim for our conclusion and adoption of the ROPAS Article 6 at COP26. This critical step would provide the bedrock of an international carbon market mechanism necessary to drive funds to the places where emissions can be cut most effectively to mobilize large-scale private investment for climate action and to drive crucial innovation. Namibia is unlocking our 5,700 square kilometers in our Karas region for the potential development of green hydrogen and ammonia assets, expected to double the region's employment and triple the installed renewable energy generation capacity for the entire country. As a planet, as a people, we are all committed to net zero. We want to make sure that by 2050, and we need to make it habitable not only for us, but also for our children and our children's children. And therefore, it's the duty of each and every one of us to make sure that we protect it. I, th I think to appreciate the vision of our forefathers, you have to look back in the history of Namibia. And our, our drought strategy was first implemented in 1936. So what does that tell you? It tells you that you know Namibia, by its geographical location, climate setup, is the most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Considering where we started, complete novice country in this game, the body of knowledge put together to make a case to the Namibian people. We have a constitution that has what it takes. Legislation, we can guarantee fiscal stability because this government for the last 32 years has offered what no other has, political stability. Namibia could potentially be known for being the pillars and uh, the front runners of producing green hydrogen and ammonia in the world. If you had to pick a place on the globe where the sun and the wind are the strongest because you're basically running a factory and you need energy to go into that factory 24-7. You want the wind to blow predominantly when the sun isn't shining. That's how, you, that's how you get your factory to be full because you're powering it with the energy. If you had to go anywhere and say where is the best place to do it, Namibia, by our calculations, the top three in the world. We are standing on the cusp of the defining energy. We are part of the revolutionizing new fuels for the world. The prospects for a different looking Namibia, it's there for us to see. So harvest it. And Namibia's advantage is that it has the best resource. It has the availability of land. It's got a government that is so progressive in terms of setting up and driving the vision to establish this. And Namibians should be proud of what, what the government has done. Outside of the US, I think Namibia is the most progressive country looking to stimulate the production of green hydrogen. When you have something, when you can produce something that has got a market, now that the globe is going to demand green hydrogen, we have got all the ingredients. Why don't we make sure that Namibia will be one of the first countries that can actually meet this global demand? The ability to make hydrogen, green hydrogen, has been available for many years. It's never been done at scale. Effectively, what green hydrogen is, separating hydrogen from uh, the hydrogen molecule out of water, so water is H2O, and if you use electricity, and you use renewable electricity that comes from the sun and the wind, to separate the hydrogen molecule from the oxygen molecule, that then becomes an energy store. Think of, it, think of hydrogen as a battery. You can then move that energy and you can use it elsewhere. You can use it to create synthetic fuels, like uh, kerosene, which is used in aircraft engines, to make something called green ammonia, which is what our project is focused around, which is used to make fertilizer, as well as it, the shipping industry, it's going to convert from using fossil fuels to using ammonia. So that's, that's why green, green hydrogen. Namibia has the opportunity to build multiple of these projects, and that in itself creates a very interesting bedrock to establish other industries that could very well be providing equipment um, or even services to these projects. And so if you begin to think of an industrialized Namibia, 
you begin to see a country that is, yes, providing solutions in terms of products like molecules, uh, ammonia or hydrogen, synthetic fuels, electrons into the very energy insecure southern African region, but also all of a sudden, because of this industry, it could start becoming um, a much more manufacturing orientated nation. Our investment into this pilot plant is about uh, 23 to 25 million euros. That comprises our training center, the refueling station, the solar portion, and the uh, electrolyzer itself. In the plant itself, um, there will be, let's say, five to 10 uh, direct jobs involved. The effect of the associated industry and what we kickstarting in that hydrogen hub in Erongo will easily run into the thousands. What really excites me out of this uh, project of the Doris Green Hydrogen Village, it has the community, it has the, the climate environment, it has the wind, it is close to the water resources. We are also going to have a pocket of greenhouses, around six of them for community gardens. Say one hectare of undergreen net to produce uh, green tomatoes for, for export purposes. What green hydrogen mean for Namibia? For us, we see it as the enabling enabler of ammonia for us for, to use as a fertilizer. Namibia is a net producer of food. We need to be able to cultivate our land and fertilize our land to, number one, produce food for ourselves, as well as a, a bread basket for Southern Africa and also for the export market. Namibia has been a country that is ready for foreign investors since our independence in 1990. We want to make sure that if we are building new sectors, those new sectors is not more just about extraction, it's also about value addition locally. And that we bring in synergies of working between the public and the private sector to make sure that this project, starting with the hyphen project, it's not only going to create 15,000 jobs that we are talking about as temporary, 3,000 as permanent, but there should be more that is coming in terms of the multiplier effect. So when I look at Namibia and I see the resources that we have as a nation, it's also about the beauty, it's about the landscape, it's about the diversity. And when I look at that, I believe that Namibia should be the best country to live in in the world. And it is doable and it is possible. When the world leaders met you know, uh, to come up with the Paris climate change in 2015, everybody agreed, uh, if you're not careful, uh, we are going to lose this climate or this planet. Global warming is increasing and therefore we need to find the solutions. Solutions started to actually come to the fore. By and large, what you need to do actually is to start embracing more renewable energy. When that then happens that people think, you know, this is what the world will need in the future for energy, then it's like, okay, well, if that is the case, Namibia is really, really well positioned. Number one, we have got all the ingredients to be able to meet the global demand for this is really going to be the, the energy of the future. Job prospects that green hydrogen stands to deliver to the economy, that impact is going to be huge and profound. We are looking beyond our lifetimes. We would have left something for future generations. That's the impact to the economy.